Chapter 4, there you go, you got it. You guys ought to be good at this by now. Ephesians chapter 4. God is a good God. Does great things for us, amen. Saved you, filled you, flooded you, come on. Come on, gave you the best of the best. Never said one bad thing about you. He's always been on your side. He's always pulling for you. The Bible says that God is a faithful God. That means He's using His faith towards you. He's calling out every good thing and every good, great thing He put on the inside of you. Every gift that He made you, He's calling that out. That's who I made you. That's what you are. He's called us to a greater place. Come on, the Bible says that He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Mm, we'll get to that maybe this morning, but there's a pretty good power working on the inside of you. Amen. Religious told us we don't have anything. We've got to get all of us together. Yeah. Got to have a corporate anointing. Don't find that in the Word. But they say that. Come on, man. No, you got it. When you got born again, you got all of Jesus. Come on, you got the full-blown resurrected at the right hand of the Father. The one who, who, the one who defeated hell in the grave. It's good news, not bad news. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, or those outside of the covenant, and the futility of their mind. And I know we talked about this for weeks, but you know the people outside of the covenant don't know what they have. Right. We should know what we have. Right. We should know what we possess. We should know the kind of God that we have. Right. Remember one time I was ministering to a guy, and a um, buddy of mine was doing uh, a healing school thing, and I sent him over there, and They've been raised Baptist, and so uh, he, I talked to him. I said, well, how you doing? He said, man, I'm mad. I said, what are you mad about? He said, he's teaching on covenant. I was like, yeah. He goes, I got saved when I was a kid. Never knew I had one. Right. Yeah. Come on. Never knew I had one. Well, what does a covenant mean? It's not just something you, you get whenever you move into a neighborhood. Right. Come on. Covenant of the neighborhood. And if you break that covenant, somebody knocks on your door. I know how that works because it happened to me once. I guess I didn't read everything I was supposed to read, but, yeah, well, I guess somebody else do that, but I figure everybody's got a gift, that's not mine. But a covenant means that everything that you possess, he possesses. And everything that he possesses, you possess. So if you've got a problem, God's got a problem. Come on. If you've got an issue, he has an issue. If you've got something that needs to be resolved, he's got something. That's why when you understand that you have a covenant, you walk different than everybody else. You walk different when you know that, hey, I've got a God that's already purchased and already bought this for me. And if i got something going on, then He's got something going on. If you mess with me, you're not just messing with me, you're messing with Him. If you attack me, you didn't just attack me, you attacked my God. And so when you have that mentality, you walk different than if you think you're slugging it out by yourself. Or if you think that you've got to convince God. Oh, come on, man, it got quiet. Man, I've been there. Oh, we need to get together and pray for signs, wonders, and miracles. Are you kidding me? The Bible says these signs follow those that believe. We shouldn't have to pray for that. That's just what, that's what follows us. Oh, i got to listen to prophet so-and-so. No, you need to listen to the, to the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. The prophetic, prophetic voice that's on the inside of you. Come on. I'm not getting against anybody. I am for Him. So whenever you're living in Him, you got a covenant with Him. Now, I'm not praying for stuff. I already got it. I understand that I have a covenant in this, and if something comes against me, it came against Him. And three of you. God bless the rest of you. Come on, man. Presbyterians or something. You guys need to step it up a little. I'm teasing you, kind of. Don't sit down on me. We, when we walk, we would need to walk like those who are in step with God. Yes. Come on, man. Those who know who He is. Those who know what we have. Come on. Come on. It's a different game now. Right. Right. When you walk like that, that you're, it's not, I'm not by myself. I've got all of heaven backing me up. Yes. My statements aren't bold because it's, I'm just saying what my Father says. My statements aren't, aren't that big. It's just what he says. It's big to the world. It's big to the situation. But it's not big to us. Right. Well, three of you. God bless the rest of you. I guess you want to walk like the rest of the Gentiles. Well, I don't know. If you tell the other mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Now, again, going back to that guy, he didn't know he had one. 
So he was alienated from this covenant. In other words, God still had the covenant with him, but he didn't know about it. And so he was alienated, even though God was the same, and God was blessing him, and God was doing everything, but he didn't walk like he had one. He walked like everybody else walked. We don't need to walk that way. Man, we've got something in God. And what he did for us is so wonderful and so great. We'll get to it today. Some of it. Verse, verse 23, I know I've been through this for like a month or two or three, I don't know. And being renewed in the spirit of your mind, put on the new man. Oh, there it is. See, the spirit of your mind, it's not just that your mind's renewed, but it comes up out of your spirit that it's renewed. Come on. So that's why it's so big that you pray in other tongues. Now, praying in other tongues isn't the end all, but it's the beginning. Come on, it's so good that the Bible says that when you pray in the Spirit, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. Well, what is that? That means that my mind's not touching it. People, I remember one time a guy said to me, so, well, you guys just out there praying in tongues, your minds are unfruitful. Thank God. <laughs> and I really thought of it when I was thinking to him. I was like, eh, your mind's fruitful. <laughs> Why? Because I'm now, listen, I'm, I'm renewing my mind through my Spirit. Come on, there's something to that. There's something to you fellowshipping the Word with the Father. There's something to you fellowshipping the Word with a friend. There's something to you meditating in the Word and going back and forth and seeing that it's coming up out of your spirit and it's renewing your mind. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes you need to be reminded. Come on. Come on. You can forget real easy all that we have. If you've got a situation going on, it's real easy to forget. Because that situation, it knocks all the time. When you go to sleep and you wake up, it's always there. Right. And we need to renew our mind through our spirit. Yeah. Thank God we can pray in other tongues. Thank God from 1 Corinthians 14, 2, when you pray in a tongue, you don't speak to men, but to who? God. Thank God that we can edify ourselves or build ourselves up. Yeah. Thank God that we can get recharged from on the inside. Thank God, thank God, thank God that it's not on us, it's on Him. Yeah. Thank God that He's already done it. Thank God we can renew our mind to the truth that we have, everything that He says that we have. Amen. Romans. I'll get to where I want to go to today. We didn't last week. We might. We may just get stuck in Romans again. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. You know, being able to renew it in the spirit of your mind, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much to that. You have the mind of Christ. So you see a situation, well, to have the mind of Christ, you have to see it the way He sees it. Yeah. And so a lot of times when we get a situation going or we're in this world, we're not of the world, but we're in the world, we start seeing it the way the world sees it. Because right. we're barraged with what they say. Or we're barraged with our situation. Well, you know, the Father has a whole different perspective. That's right. If you ever stopped at a train, you know, that thing's just going... You're thinking, when's this ever going to end? If you've ever been to Claremore, <laughs> they stop, then they start, then they go backwards, and you're like, how does anybody live here? Because you can't get from A to B. It's unbelievable. I just wanted to go to the Hammond House, and I can't go anywhere. Anyway, if you ever go there, fried ribeye, it's outstanding. Anyway, you see that, but if you went way back up on a hill, you could see the beginning from the end. You could see where the locomotive was. You could see where the caboose was. You could see the whole deal. Well, that's the Father's perspective. Amen. Man, we're in this world that's going... He goes, well, wait, wait, wait. Let me give you my perspective. See, when you start praying in tongues, you start going, oh, I, got, I, I can see it the way God sees it. Yeah. Renewed, and I got the mind of Christ, I start seeing it the way God sees it. Man, I've told you this over and over and over and over and over, but my least favorite scripture in the Bible is bless those who curse you. You might like it. I don't, I don't like it at all. But you know when you get a God perspective that love always wins and never fails. Amen. That no matter what happens, love can't fail. Right. That whenever you start giving out a God that those who persecute you, you're going to bless them. Yeah. Those who spitefully misuse you, you're, you're praying for them and you're, you're going after them. Well, your flesh doesn't like that. But it eventually sees the benefit of that. Amen. So when you start giving out of yourself out of God, it's different than whenever you just give out of yourself to give out of yourself. I'll get to that in a second. You guys still here? Yeah. Romans chapter 4, verse 17 again. Talking about Abraham, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him whom believe God, who gives life 
to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now there's, there, is, there is the mind of Christ. There is seeing it the way, well, this doesn't exist, but I'm calling it like it does because God said I can. God says that I'm a co-creator with Him. God says He's given me authority on this earth. So I'm going to start calling it the way God says it. I'm going to start saying, proclaiming what the Word says. Whatever my Father says, that's what I'm saying. Whatever I see Him do, that's what I'm going to do. What are you doing? I'm calling those things that don't exist as though they did. Even the dead stuff, I'm saying, hey, you're going to have life. How's that going to work? I don't know. It's not my job to make it work. My job is to proclaim it. My job is to show up. Raise the dead. How are you going to raise the dead? I don't know. All I know is I'm supposed to show up. It's his job to perform, not yours. Your job is you take him everywhere you go. Your job is to lay hands on the sick. You don't heal him. He heals him. Your job is to show up with good things in your mouth. He's the encourager. He's the one that does it. It's all glory goes to him. You show up with all the glory. Because he lives on the inside of you. So that's the mind right there. Why? Things look bad. Oh, things have never been better. Because the darker it gets in the world, the brighter we shine. The darker it is outside, the brighter the light. Come on, man. When it's dusk, you got a flashlight, it's kind of, eh, it works a little. Man, when it gets dark out, thank God for that flashlight. Thank God for us. Thank God you're the light of the world. Thank God you bring Jesus into every situation. Thank God you make the crooked things straight because He lives on the inside of you. Thank God that you call those things that don't exist as though they do. Thank God that He brings life to things that are dead. Come on, man. You may be in a situation that looks hopeless. There's no hopelessness to Him. In Him is hope. Faith, hope, and love. Greater than these is love. But these three remain. Man, you got a picture from God. It'll change everything. What do you look like being that way? What's it, what's it look like you being triumphant? What's it look like you being well? What's it look like you being prosperous? What's it look like your marriage being perfect? What's it look like with you doing the right thing at the right time? What's it look like? Because that's where he'll lead you and guide you. He never shows, he never shows up to make you lose. He says he always leads us in triumph. I don't know about you, but I like winning. I hate to lose. I hate to lose. I remember I played in a game one time, and somebody, I've told you this, I only got so many stories. I got beat the last second they kicked the field goal. I still have people go, man, that was a great game. No, it wasn't. That game sucked. Because I lost. I hate to lose. Thank God that's why I got Jesus. Thank God he's undefeated. Thank God even when it looked like he lost, he didn't lose. It was the ultimate James Bond move. Good news, not bad news, man. Verse 18, talking about Abraham again. Contrary to hope, hope's your what? Picture. picture. Every time you see the word hope in the Bible, it's a picture. Contrary to hope, contrary to God's picture, in God's picture believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be, not being weak in faith, did not consider his own body, already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. This is where we got stopped last time. He gave, this is what the Holy Ghost said, never saw this before. He gave what he didn't have. He gave what he didn't have. He gave glory to God, and he didn't have the glory of God. He gave what he didn't possess. But you have the glory of the Father. You have what well, you can give out of what you have. So this, this guy, this cat has nothing. And he gives out of what he doesn't have. You've got a never-ending supply. So how much more? How much more can you give? How much more can you give glory to the Father? How much more can you bring glory and honor to Him? How much more? If He gave out of what He didn't have and believed God and giving glory to God, said He was strengthened by giving glory to God. Gave out of what he didn't possess, yet you do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, come on, you ain't listening to me. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Man, we may never get past this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she bought the lotura if I said that. Ha 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 ha. Whoosh, Devada. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being fully convinced what he had promised, 
he was able to perform. And there's something about you giving glory to God that convinces you. There's something about you giving glory to the Father that convinces you He is and He's well able. Hmm. See, when you, when, you, when you don't know what you have, then you don't give. And when you don't give, then you don't see the result. I'm not talking about cash, so you can relax. <laughs> I'm talking about getting out of the life you've been given. Yeah. Yeah. That how it brings glory and honor to the Father. And that when you give out of that life, it convinces you. Oh, oh, come on. That's why, that's why David did what he did. That's why, you know, lion and the bear and then Goliath. He, he gave out of what he had. He gave out. He knew he had a covenant. He didn't live under the Abrahamic deal. They came in and said, you can't, or he did live under the Abrahamic, not the, the, not the law. And they said, you can't eat that. He said, watch me. You can't eat the showbread. He's making peanut butter, PB and J's. He's going, what's the deal? I'm not under that. I'm under this. He understood what he had and gave out of what he had and understood that he had a covenant. And that covenant meant that if he had something wrong, that means that the guy behind him had something wrong. And the guy behind him just happened to be the creator of everything. It was easy to give what he didn't have because he knew what was backing him up. Come on, man. The more you give out of what now we've been given. We've been given. Jesus said John the Baptist is the least among all these guys. David wasn't close to him. Abraham's not close to him. None of these guys. He's the greatest. Moses, none of them. John the Baptist is the greatest. And he says he's not even, he's not even, he's not even qualified to carry your Nikes. Yeah. 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 How much more do you have? Yeah. Come on, man. How much more do you have? You guys still here? Yeah. Colossians. Oh, chicky, here we go. That was all free. <laughs> oh, I like this stuff, man. Uh, let's start Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Paul writing says, Of which I became a minister according to the steward, stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. So now it's been revealed to you. Remember, we went through this in Corinthians where he said, eyes not seen, ears not heard. Things that God has planned for those who, who love him, who he loves. Right? And then he says, but, and that, that means everything else, that's old covenant, but you have, because the Spirit of God reveals what has been freely given to us. Right? So before, nobody knew it. You guys ready? But reveal them to his saints. Verse 27. To them God willed, that's you, to make known the riches of the glory of the mystery to the, among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you, the very picture of his glory. So stop. How powerful is a picture? Well, evidently, the children of Israel are wandering through the desert and they, they screw up. And I mean, they're getting hammered by these snakes and they're dying. And they said, Put one on a pole. It's a type and shadow. It's a picture of Jesus and what he was going to do. A picture. said, so look at that pole and you get healed. Looking at a picture got him born again. Yeah. Looking at a picture of what was to come got him, born, uh, got, him, got him healed. Looking at something that wasn't even real, that wasn't even right, just a picture of a type and shadow of Jesus got him healed. How much more that the one who died for you, the one who sacrificed for you, the one that did everything for you, that bought everything that you have need of, now not only do you have a picture, but you've got a living hope. You've got the what? The glory of God living on the inside of us. Abraham gave out of what he didn't have. We got it to give out. We've got the glory of God on the inside of you to give out. Now you can give what you possess. And it brings glory. Every time you tell somebody about Jesus, it's bringing glory and honor. Now listen, I'm not talking about a work. I'm not talking about you going in and they saying, how many people did you talk to today? I'm talking about when the occasion comes up and it's in here and it comes up out of you and your flesh goes, <laughs> don't say anything. I remember one time I gave a, 
a uh, golf lesson away for the Tulsa Drillers. I don't know how it happened, but I did. So this guy shows up. I've told you the story before. I've only got so many. This guy shows up, and he's, hey, I won this. Okay, calls or whatever. Set the appointment. So we're on the driving range. And the Lord said, he won it because I want him. Okay. Well, I'm not opposed to telling anybody about Jesus, but I mean, you know, the next thing you know, this guy's, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Oh, this isn't going to be what I thought. I thought it'd be like, you know, it was a hard case. So my flesh was like, because I'd say something, he'd look at me and stuff. So I kept, man, I was like, my flesh was like, just shut up. <laughs> but on the inside, I was like, I can't. Yeah. I can't. So I said, you know, and my, if you know me at all, my personality is I am not confrontational. Especially then, you know, so whatever. You know, go to hell, I don't care. <laughs> Look at me like that. So... We go back and forth. Finally, I said, hey, if you, listen, if you died, where would you go? And, you know, and that's the, old, the whole deal. Right. And I'm thinking, this is corny, but I, that's what I got, so that's what I gave him. And he looked at me, oh, I don't know. Wouldn't you like to? Yeah. No, still not happy. Well, Jesus is the only way you can figure that out. Okay. <laughs> Flesh didn't want to, didn't enjoy it, just let him alone, but something on the inside. Yeah. Looking at me funny, I'll give you another one. Guy, same, same, his last name is my first name. <laughs> Met him in Arizona, he played golf at Stanford, and uh, he was in town for a uh, golf tournament. Matter of fact, it was at the place I work at now, and wasn't working there then. Staying with somebody from the church, he called me. Said I'm gonna be in town. I, you know, we had something going, kids, and not much room. So he went over there, came by, and he said, "Man, something's different." I said, "Well, you know, they, they love Jesus." He goes, "Yeah, whatever." So he sent in my house, came by to thank me, leaving, driving to the next deal, and the Lord said, "Tell me about him." So I did, and he's like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, I went to Stanford. Okay. <laughs> so he gets in his car, and I won't let him shut the door. And I'm not like this. So I said, you know, you're not leaving until you pray with me. Now, you would think I'm strong-arming, and I was. But I was getting it on the inside. My flesh was going, what are you doing? He knows a lot of people you know. I mean, those things run through your brain. So finally, he gets out of the car. I said, you're not leaving until you pray with me. So he prays like this. All right. Because i got to go. So I'll just, whatever, just say it, and I'll say it. And so he did. See ya, see ya. I thought, well, that didn't work. The Lord says, or the Word says, no man calls Jesus Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I still get Christmas cards. He sent me a letter and said, I don't know what happened that day in your driveway. <laughs> he said, but I guess it was Jesus. Yes, it was. You little communist Stanford guy. I got you. <laughs> didn't believe in anything. I got you. Come on, man. Why? But, so it's not always comfortable to your flesh, but you're giving what out of what you got. Yeah. It may not be comfortable at the time, but you get a leading by the Holy Ghost, you start giving out what you got, things happen. Yeah. Signs and wonders follow you because why? You're a believer. You are the glory. You are the picture of Him on the earth. Watch this. The mystery's been hidden from all these ages, from generations, but now it's been revealed to us. Christ in us, the very picture of His glory. Watch this. Chapter 2, because we always stop there. Skip on down to verse 2. That their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of the understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of what? God. Wait a minute, what did He just say the mystery was? Christ in you, the hope of glory. That word knowledge there is an intimacy. That's a relationship. Right. Oh, the more I know him. Man, come on, man. I'm all about you coming to church. But you ought to be having church everywhere you go. If you're praying for revival, stop. You are the revival. 
If you're praying for signs and wonders, stop. They follow you. Man, start being what we are. When we show up, God shows up. When you show up, the glory of God shows up. When you walked in, He walked in. When you left, He stayed. Come on, man. He calls before you. He stays behind you. He's everywhere. You are the picture of who He is. You worship God out of that glory. You talk about God out of that glory. That glory is undefeated. It's never lost and never will. We've got something to give. We ought to start giving. Come on, man. And sometimes people just need you to listen to them. Sometimes they just need you to show up. Why? Because when you showed up, the presence showed up. Oh, that's, 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 that's prideful. No, it's not. That's God living on the inside of me. He's the head. You're the body. You take Him everywhere you go. Whenever you walked in, He walked in. I can't, my head can't go somewhere my body doesn't go. So I've got to take Jesus wherever He wants to go. You guys still here? Oh, it gets better. Watch this. Knowledge of the mystery of God in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, man. Man. Acts chapter 3. Gate beautiful. Silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have, this very picture of the Father, Christ in us, the hope, the picture of His glory, we give to you. Come on. Then whenever they, whenever they interrogated him, they said they're uneducated and untrained men. They must have been with Jesus. Yeah. Why? Because their knowledge is too great. Yeah. Their wisdom's too good. Yeah. Amen. They're answering the same way he answered us. He's, they're getting us the same way he got us. In whom, verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest some, anyone should what? Deceive you with persuasive words. Man, we've been lied to. I was lied to. Not because somebody didn't like me or didn't love me. They thought they were loving me. But I thought, man, if I get anything, I've got to go up this chain of command. If I'm going to get anything, let's take him to a meeting. Didn't know I had it. Didn't know I possessed it. Didn't know that I had everything that he is. You guys still here? Oh, man. For though I'm absent in the flesh, yet I'm with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order, steadfastness of the faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so what? Walk in him. Man, it's an easy. It doesn't say run in him. It doesn't say be winded in him. <laughs> it says walk in him. It's not hard to walk. You guys out there? Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, having been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Verse 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you. I was cheated most of my life. Through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, basic principles of the world, not according to Christ or to the anointing. Or Christ there means the anointing. It means you've got an anointing. The Bible says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all truth. You know what's true. It says that you don't need anybody to teach you that you're led by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, it says that you, what should, you, my word says that those are led by the Spirit of God. Those are my children. You hear my voice and not another one will you follow. How plain, how plain do I have to speak to get you to understand that I speak to you daily, that I talk to you constantly, that I'm always leading you and I'm always guiding you and I'm always directing you, that I've got plans of good and not evil. I've set you up for success. But not only that, I've set everyone up around you for success, that my glory may be revealed through you to them, and then to them through you. It's just not the words you say, but the actions that you take. It's not just what you say, but sometimes it's just showing up. Showing up with my glory. Showing up with my goodness. A consciousness. A consciousness that I'm there. A consciousness that I want to do all that I said that I would do. 
You read in my word all the things that Jesus did. You read all the things that Peter did. You read all the things that Paul did. You read all the things that Stephen did. Oh yeah, but you say, well, that was for them. That wasn't for them. That's for you. That's for all my children. Not a call, not a gift, just my children. You're my child. You're my child, so you should walk in my glory. You're my child, so you should display me on the earth. You're my child, so you should be showing off my goodness. You're my child, so heaven lives on the inside of you. You're my child, my goodness follows you. You're my child, my mercy follows you. You're my child, you are right with me. And when they've seen you, they've seen me. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beware lest anyone cheats you through philosophy, empty deceit according to traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to the anointing. For in Him, in Him, in Jesus, in Him, all the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost lived bodily. Watch this next verse where I want to get to. And you are complete in Him. <laughs> that means that all that lives in you. If you've been made complete in Him, that means that all that stuff lives in you. That means the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost lives in you. That means that all His goodness lives in you. If Jesus did it and said the same things I did, you'll do. Send us out. That means that you'd be doing it too. That means that He didn't leave you with an unfair advantage. That you got the exact same God. You have the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, you got it better than when He walked the earth because He purchased everything back. He said, now I've got all the keys. And I'm giving it to you. Watch what, it, watch what the next line says. And you are complete in him who's the head of all principality and power. <laughs> Come on, man. You got a covenant. You got a name that's above every name, that everything has to bow to that name. He's given you an anointing that means that you've got everything. He's the head, and you're, so that means that you're a head of all power and principality. That means that everything is subject to you even if you don't use the name. Even if you don't use the covenant. Still subject to you because of who God is. Remember those guys were running around? They weren't even born again. They were casting out demons. Finally they got to a big fella. And they said, well, Paul we know. Who are you? Well, that doesn't happen to us. They know your name. <laughs> Paul I know. Sean I know. Bobby I know. Come on. They know your name. Why? Because you're ahead of them. Why? Because you're far above. That means that even if you didn't use your covenant, even if you didn't use the name, they know who you are. You're written in the Lamb's book of life. They know who you are. You've been given the fullness of God. They know who you are. You're the picture of His glory. They know who you are. It's about time we figure out who we are. It's about time we, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just not here by accident. I'm not just a mere human, but I'm a superhuman because I've been born again. I don't just walk this earth like everybody outside of the covenant. I walk it the same as Jesus is walking it. He's the head. I'm the body. I've got his glory. I'm showing it off. I'm giving him back that glory. I'm using it. And I'm under it.